So Father and I are going to read this wonderful children's story, The Miracle of St. Nicholas. It's about a church that was closed down during the communist times in Russia. And the people couldn't go to church. We, we had a little experience of that during COVID where we weren't, many of us were not able to go to church. And it was really, it was really terrible. I, I cried every day during that, during that exile that we were in. And that was nothing like the communist exile. This is about a church dedicated to St. Nicholas in a little village that was closed down, locked up for 60 years. I wanted to show the reader my baptismal cross that I was given by my godmother in 1986. She was born in St. Petersburg in Russia in 1909. Mrs. Prujan, Tatiana, was her patron saint, Tatiana of Rome. She gave me this cross in 1986, and God has allowed me to keep the cross for the last 37 years since we were all baptized. When she was born, the churches were open in Russia, and she could go to church freely until she was eight years old when the revolution happened. So I'm hoping that all of the children and anybody who's watching this will treasure our ability, our freedom to go to church as long as we have it and pray that we can keep it. So here's the story, the miracle of St. Nicholas. It was the day before Christmas in the small Russian village of Zima. Alexei's babushka, Ariel, babushka is grandmother or nana. Mm -hmm. Alexei's babushka was telling Alexei what Christmas was like when she was a girl. Our church was as crowded as a pod full of peas. Pine boughs filled the church with the scent of the forest. Candles made the church as bright as the sunniest day. Watching over us was the blessed icon of St. Nicholas. What is an icon? Alexei asked. A question always sat on the tip of Alexei's tongue, like a bird, a little bird ready to fly. His Nana said, an icon is a painting of a holy person. This is our icon of St. Nicholas. It is a painting into which the artist has put his whole soul. Our icon of St. Nicholas was 500 years old. It was more precious to us than our lives. Babushka, Alexei asked, why is our church closed? When I was a child, the very age you are now, the babushka said, soldiers came to our village. They did not like churches. They did not want people to believe in God. They warned the villagers, if, you, if we find you in your church, we will arrest you and send you far away. No sooner had the soldiers barred the doors of St. Nicholas than everything inside the church disappeared. It is a great mystery. That was long ago, the babushka said. Now the soldiers who closed our church are gone. Alexei asked, then why can't we celebrate Christmas tomorrow in St. Nicholas? The church has been empty for 60 years, the babushka said. You cannot celebrate Christmas in a church with an empty altar, with no cross, no candles, no bread or wine, 
no icon of St. Nicholas, and no priest. Birds have made their nests there. It is dancing with mice. It would take a miracle to open our church. Babushka, what is a miracle? Alexei asked. A miracle happens, his babushka said, when God enters into your dream. But first, you must have the dream. That afternoon, Alexei rubbed the frost from the windows of St. Nicholas and peered inside. The church was empty. The floor was soft with dust. The walls were netted with cobwebs. He tried the door of the church. It was unlocked. If a door were unlocked, Alexei was a boy to walk through it. The startled mice scampered out of the church. As Alexei stood inside the deserted church, he said to himself, I wish we could celebrate Christmas here. When Alexei set his heart on something, he moved as quickly as the mice. Mm -hmm. He wrapped a bundle of twigs with some twine and swept dust from the floor. He brushed the cobwebs from the walls. He cleaned away the birds' nests. Alexei uh, tramped through the snow to the pine forest at the edge of the village. The wind tried to snatch away his cap. The snow sneaked into the holes in his boots. Reaching up into the trees, Alexei broke off some fragment branches, fragrant branches. Returning to the church, he laid the boughs around the altar. Mm -hmm. Is this the one? No, you, you turn two pages. Zima was a village where you were as likely to be in your neighbor's house as your own. Word of what Alexei was doing soon spread through the village. The villagers hurried to see for themselves. The farmer, the carpenter, the storekeeper, the teacher, and the shoemaker arrived with their families. Alexei's mother and father came with Alexei's babushka and his little sister, Natasha. Natasha uh, brought her studied, uh, brought her stuffed bear who would not be left at home behind. One after another, the whole village took turns peeking into the church. One after another, they returned to their homes with a big smile and a little secret. Only the shoemaker stayed behind. He was a quiet old man with gentle ways. His clothes were worn and patched. His gray beard was tangled. His shoulders were stooped from hunching over his work. His hands were stained from tanning leather. The shoemaker asked Alexei, why have you swept out the church and laid the pine boughs about? So we can celebrate Christmas in the church tomorrow, Alexei answered. Many times I have mended your boots, Alexei. When I saw all the holes you had worn in them, I said to myself, there is a boy who will always be one step ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Shoemaker went away with a little smile and a big secret. For their dinner on Christmas Eve, Alexei's family had jam to put into their tea. There was a dish of cooked dried fruits. 
12 fruits in all, one for each of the apostles. Alexei's mother had prepared kutya, a thick porridge made of crushed hazelnuts and almonds cooked with barley and honey. It had bubbled to itself on the stove all afternoon. You can tell when it is done, Alexei's mother said, when it does not talk anymore. Alexei's father scattered straw on the floor to remind them that Jesus was born in a stable. He put a bit of hay under the tablecloth to remind them Jesus lay in a manger. Outside, the wind sent the snow tumbling and swirling. It sought out the cracks in Alexei's house. It sent bits of surprised snow through the cracks. Still, Alexei and his family were happy, for the porridge warmed their insides and the stove warmed their outsides. After dinner, there were gifts. Alexei received new boots. They would protect his feet from the snow that had nothing better to do than fall day after day. Natasha was given a sweater to shield her from the cold winds that rushed down from the North Pole. As she did every Christmas Eve, the babushka gave Alexei and Natasha a gingerbread man baked with her precious store of molasses. Mm. It was time to go to bed. Alexei's mother told him, you must lie down like a stone and rise up like new bread. In bed that night, Alexei could not stop thinking of the empty church. He watched the moon turn the snow blue and the icicles golden. He climbed out from under his warm quilt. Alexei put on his new boots and went out into the winter night. He tramped through the snow until he reached the church of St. Nicholas. If a miracle was going to happen, also um, Alexei wanted to be there. He was surprised to find the farmer and his family inside the church. The farmer was placing two silver candlesticks upon the altar. His wife had a handful of candles. As the flames kindled on the altar, the dark hurried away. Where did the candles and candlesticks come from? Alexei asked. The farmer explained, the day the church was closed, my father concealed the candlesticks in a sack of grain. Every summer, when he had gathered the honey, his wife said, I make candles from the bees wax but um, just such a, for just such a day as this one. And the teacher entered the church. She opened a bumpy bundle. Inside the bundle was a cloth woven with many hues, as though bright birds had flown back and forth leaving behind their colors. The teacher spread the cloth over the altar. Where did so beautiful a cloth come from? Alexei asked. Mm. The teacher said, when the church was closed, my mother hid the cloth among our quilts. There was the carpenter and his family. The carpenter was help holding a cross. My dedushka, that's my grandfather, rescued the cross from the church the day St. Nicholas was closed. The carpenter said, all these years it has lain hidden under the floor of my workshop. The storekeeper and his wife arrived, 
carrying a bottle of wine and a basket of bread. For many years, I have saved this wine, the storekeeper told Alexei. The wife of the storekeeper said, I have baked loaves of bread, uh, of the holy Christmas bread, and marked them with the sign of the cross. Just then, Alexei's mother and father, with his babushka and Natasha, entered the church. Natasha was yawning, for it was very early in the morning. The babushka looked stern and happy all at once. She was carrying something wrapped up in her best shawl. The villagers crowded around her. Gently, she unfolded the scarf. There was the painting of St. Nicholas. At last, the icon was in the church where it had been for as many years as anyone could recall. The eyes of the saint seemed to be looking right at Alexei. Alexei said, now we have the candles and the altar cloth the cross, the bread and wine, and the icon of St. Nicholas. But we don't have a priest. We must wait, his babushka said. Everyone sat quietly in the church. Natasha was asleep with her head on babushka's shoulder. The church doors opened. A priest walked down the aisle. He was dressed in a robe of white and gold, like sun breaking through morning clouds. In his hands he held the holy scriptures. It's the shoemaker, Alexei cried. But he was the shoemaker no longer. His scraggly beard was neatly combed. He did not stoop but stood as straight as a pine tree. His ragged and patched clothes had been changed for the robe of a priest. The babushka whispered to Alexei, many years ago, it was dangerous to be a priest. Priests were often put into prison. So we hid the priest in our village. He became our shoemaker. Now we have the priest back again. Everyone lit a candle. The church was as bright as a summer day. Watching over the church in a place of honor was the blessed icon of St. Nicholas and the Christmas service was just as Alexei's babushka remembered. Mm -hmm. Holy Father Nicholas, pray to God for us. Okay, Dad.